Take it away. I finished reading it first. Hi. There we go. Working microphone. The ever free forest. Dusk. A giant black rock steams gently in a clearing. Muffins flies in, carrying her mailbag. She lowers jewelry, jewelers, glasses, and reads the address on a package. Giant steaming rock. Shrugging, she knocks on the rock. Bong! What? It sounds hollow. Special delivery? Bloop, bleep! The rock pulses with light. Hello, parcel for Miss Muffins? Suddenly, there's a black stallion beside her, his face hidden by a hooded cloak. Oh, hi! I'm Miss Muffins, too! We must be related! <laughs> he looms over Muffins, who stares nearsightedly into his chest, which is giant and armored. I feel like we don't look so alike, but my eyes can be a little... <laughs> the figure's long shadow blocks the last of the sun. She hands over her clipboard. The figure draws its hoof across the paper, leaving it crinkling and burning. I'm a day-old muffin. Are you a half-baked muffin? <laughs> no, no, you're too quiet. I bet you're a Mc MacGuffin muffin. <laughs> I hope you're not a stud muffin. Please say no. <laughs> His cloak falls away, revealing a sword that glints evilly. Muffins leans in to see and bonks her head on his chest. A crane. Oh, ow, <laughs> you must be a rock hard muffin. <laughs> I've heard of your branch of the family. Anyway, not a fight, there's a parcel. She hands over the parcel. The armored pony rips off the paper, revealing a fuzzy pink sweater. Muffins takes off as fast as she can, but the armored pony grabs her by the mail bag. He snorts evil clouds in her face. You look no matter. This is not the parcel I require. You will procure my parcel, or you will perish. Uh, <laughs> I see what you did there. Nice example of a misplaced 
modifier, you big scholars. She gives them both a noogie of pure body pride and starts trotting again. I want to help, but I'm filing petitions in Canterlock this morning before this super annoying convention. <laughs> <laughs> Except not working at all. What does Twilight do different? 
on Spike? Apart from not using a toy wand, having a horn, and being, like, born magical? Look, what about these magic words? Do you think if we, do you think we say them out loud or just think them really hard? I'm going loud. No, you absolutely do not uh, want to... Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Twilight enters downstairs. Spike, I'm home. Did Pinky and Rainbow find the Scandinavian grammar section? I'm glad today is done. I never knew being a princess was going to mean so much paperwork. Spike convulses and shoots out a burst of fire. As Twilight enters the library, hundreds of tickets blast out of Spike's mouth, plastering her. Rainbow and Pinky grab tickets and run. Exterior, outside Verity's shop, dusk. Pinky carries a big battered box and reads a comic at the same time. Oh, tap the line. Absent to my, absent mindedly. <laughs> Absent-mindedly, she knocks on Rarity's shop door. <laughs> Rarity opens the door. Pinky hands over the box, which explodes sploof. Blueberry, Rarity, and fabric. Pinky starts to walk away, but hears a muffled. <laughs> Pinky looks up from the comic. Her eyes widen. Oops. She hauls to Rarity out. She hauls Rarity out of the mess. Swashes a fabric stick to Rarity's flanks. Pinky pulls a cloth off Rarity's head. She goes back to her comic, then glances at Rarity, who is covered in fabric swatches, then back at the comic. Wow, Rarity, you look just like Raggy Muffin! <gasps> you can cosplay at BoobyCon like that! <laughs> Watchy Muffin? What are you? Raggy Muffin! You know Kabumi, Space Princess? That's her bumbling alter ego in my literature. See? She waves her open comic from Rarity's face, showing the humble pony in patchwork dress, morphing into glamour pony. A silver spacesuit. Muffins didn't come to work today. Raggy muffins? More to the point, why did you bury me in rags? Not raggy muffin, muffins muffins! Meal delivery muffins? Didn't show up. I'm delivering meal until she comes back. Well, what for the raccoon sitting rack? Well, that was a date with modifier. Dang, I see smart. Oh, I see what you're asking there. It's because the raccoons got into the mail. They trashed the post office. Frog, 
As if you could get into that great frock so quickly if you were wearing a silver onesie. Oh. You might press the raccoons. That's what the ponies are saying. A onesie. I mean, what if you have to go to the little fillies room? Can I have my gun? No, no, Mickey. Must so. Must so. Rudy walks past her into the house, still absorbed in the comic. Slam. Canterlot Hall of Records, Boomicon. Rainbow grins at a giant marquee. Welcome, Boomicon. A boulder rolls into frame. It weebles, rights itself. A head pops out the top. It's Maude, dressed as a meteor. <laughs> how, how did you get here? What's, Centri what's that? Centrifugal force, meteor. Excited? I'm like a metastable allotrope of carbon under 136 different kinds of gigapascals. Okay, well, try and contain yourself. It's hard. <laughs> that was me telling a joke. This is me laughing. Where's Pinky? She had a little costume hiccup. Clang, clang, clang. Pinky plonks in awkwardly, covered with tied-on mirrors and pots. Do I look like a boomy? Not really. But you sound boomy. Pixter, doesn't Kaboomy wear like a silver space onesie? Mirrors and pots are silver. Also, Rarity <laughs> said a onesie is a serious commitment. Something about a, uh, something about a jelly bag? You know how Rarity just talks and talks and then what does that even mean? Oh, 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 also I can check my teeth in my honey. <laughs> she turns around and smiles at her bum. <laughs> and that's a plus why? you'll stand out. Uh, not so much as me, of course. Every pony cosplay is the hero. They're gonna lose their pony minds when they see my awesome villain. Rainbow's cosplay is a fakey version of Asterius. I am Asterius! Fear my wand of doom! She whips out the wand and waves it around. in front and in back of them. It goes around the block and into the horizon. Every single pony in the line is dressed as a stereos. <laughs> A bespeckled pony walks by, checks his beard in Pinky's tiny mirror. That's Pony Flanks, the comic writer! Pony Flanks breaks into a run. Beat. After Pandy, the dust clears, leaving Maud. She tries to tip herself. Looks right, left, stuck. Interior, the convention, later. The halls are packed with costumed ponies. Only one pony looks her usual self. No! Twilight locks the door of a room marked Ancient Records against a crowd of ponies. This room is off limits, folks. Sorry. There are irreplace irreplaceable ancient documents in here, and we can't have everybody... But the giant meteor panel isn't there. They put a giant meteor in there so we can have the giant meteor panel and talk about the giant meteors. Don't be ridiculous. There's no giant meteor in here. Look. She opens the door and has to prevent another stampede because there's a giant meteor in the record room. She slams it shut. Oh, heck. The crowd of ponies is now a very long line. This convention is all about very long lines. <laughs> the pony, dressed as a donut, gets in Twilight's face. We want to go in there and discuss motility and zero gravity atmospheres, and we want to do it now. Look, I don't make the rules. 
actually I do. You can't go in here. Have I mentioned I'm a princess? <laughs> Who is it? You're dressed as a donut. Princess donut. <laughs> a random mysterious cosplayer wheels around making everyone in the crowd duck because he's carrying a giant foam sword. Ex excuse me, can I have that for a second? Twilight grabs the sword, ducks into the ancient records room, closes the door, shoves the sword through the handles. There. Interior, the record room. It's blissfully quiet, except for a faint metallic banging. Twilight swings around. Nothing there but the giant meteor. How did they even get that thing in here? Uh, uh, oh, hi. Uh, I didn't see you there. Bang, bang, bang. Again, with the metallic sound, is coming from the giant meteor. Did you hear something? Asterius, all cape and armor, blocks her. Look, I don't want to mess up your fun, but this is the ancient records room, and I just happen to be, among other things, an ace record keeper. There are documents in here that I don't, that can't be replaced, and I don't want them misplaced, if you take my meaning. So, your panel will have to happen somewhere else. Asterius looms. The light seems to dim. This guy is huge. Good costume, by the way. Convincing. Clang, bong, doom comes from the meteor. Behind Twilight, Asterius draws his sword. Do you hear something? I did not come for the panel. Yeah, I mean, what kind of nerd? See, see, sees the shadow of Asterius' sword, realizing... Wants to talk about space rocks. Oh, heck. Outside, Maud is still stuck in her meteor. A flyer advertising the giant meteor panel drifts by. In the sky behind Maud, a pony in a silver onesie rides a big old smoking space rock. <laughs> Kaboom! She face plants on the lawn. After a second, she stands. I'm okay! Surprise! Kaboomy! Her onesie morphs into the drab. Hatch frock of her alter ego from the comic, Raggy Muffin, who looks quite a bit like our muffins. Hmm. She pushes glasses up her nose and trots past Maud to Boomicon. A second later, she trots back behind Maud. You're in a meteor. Yep. Maud strains to see her. Don't see too many ponies and meteors in these parts. How'd you make that hole? My dragon friend. I told him there could be a diamond surprise inside. Was there? Yup, but he ate it. <laughs> Dragons, right? Can't be bothered to dig up a carrot, but show them something to break their mo skill with a crazy fusion crust and a bunch of right lips, and they're all... Stuck. Maud can't quite see her. You like rocks? Does topaz thermoluminesce? Does sediment settle? They laugh. The big rock nerds. <laughs> Raggy Muffin moves around the front of her. Maud sees her properly for the first time. Muffins? Almost. Name's Raggy Muffin. Anywho, awesome talking to you, but I better go. These ponies aren't going to save themselves from a cosmic calamity. Are you? You're the real Raggy Muffins. Kaboomy's alter ego. Oh, oh. Keep it down. No pony can know who I am. You're a fellow rock behaviorist, and I trust you instantly because a cartoon is only 22 minutes long and we don't have time to go for dip. <laughs> I have no idea how you know about me, but I have to ask you not to tell anyone else. I want to fake my way into the Hall of Records and retrieve the record of how to use the wand of Pawdoom! Otherwise, ding! Otherwise known as the Wand of Doom, to enslave a dimension. It's top secret, hush hush, download, save equestria type stuff, okay? Okay, but do you know a pony named Pony Flanks? Pony Flanks? Oh, the artist, yeah! He drew my portrait when I graduated the Space Academy. Why? You know how when meteors hit a planet, they're all surprised? Like, how did that get there? <laughs> yeah. Well, you might feel like that after you enter that building. Convention. Kabumi, dressed as Raggy Muffin, stands in the middle of the hallway. 
The sea of ponies dress like her pass on either side. She gapes. One of them wears a spicier version of her ragamuffin costume. A big, foofy wig, long leather boots, and a smoking hot bridle. She blows a kiss at Raggy. Raggy Muffin is just recovering from that when she sees her first Astarius. Astarius, draw your sword! Swoosh! Her patch dress vanishes, replaced by the silver onesie. Now she is Kaboomy. The crowd breaks into applause. The Astarius cars cosplayer soaks. I'd fight you, but a mean librarian took my sword. <laughs> Rarity breaks into the crowd. She's also wearing a silver onesie. Astarius holds Twilight at sword point. You will help me find the spell that activates the wand of Ding, so that when I find my wand, I may enslave the pony dimensions. Now, or your tomb will be this meteor. Newsflash, Neil deGrasse Bison. <laughs> Astarius taps the meteor. Something in the meteor taps back. Some ponies in there. Help! You were saying. <laughs> anyway, hurry it along. I feel the presence of my wand, which means she'll be here any minute. Who's she? She who? It's Muffins! I wasn't talking to you, prisoner. Muffins, you let her out right now, mister, or you're gonna see some, like, Rat. Her horn lights up. Astarius reaches out and flicks it with his hoof. Poof. Goes dark. Extrudes a sad puff of smoke. My horn! How did you... <laughs> Librarian, you have one use to me. Find the spell. You know what? Someone needs you. Needs to teach you how to talk to customer service. <laughs> boring, boring. Ah, uh, what the heck? I like the wacky, cracky sound of breaking pony neck! He grabs Twilight's neck. Did you just break into, like, evil song? He squeezes. Um, could I help you locate the spell that will help you activate the wand of Patui whatever and enslave the pony dimensions? <gasps> yes, I could. But really, what's the point? You said that you don't even have this wand. Bang! The door flies open. Pinky and... And and Rainbow Dash stand there. Rainbow brandishes the wand. I am Asterius! Fear my wand! Oh, it's Roller. <laughs> you came after all! Who says princesses aren't fun? Come your wand. Astarius snatches the wand from Rainbow's hand. Hey! <laughs> you were saying about me not having the wand, Princess Twilight. The bathroom at the convention. <laughs> Breathing hard, Kabumi flies in, slamming the door behind her. She looks at the ceiling. Meteor, I need you. There's a whistling sound. Weeds. Outside, a flaming meteor plummets toward the Hall of Records. It crashes to the ceiling, the second floor, and into the bathroom in front of Kabumi, creating a convenient barrier across the door. That'll keep ponies out a while. Outside the bathroom, a massive line immediately develops inside the bathroom. Everyone knows who I am! Both of me! They're all me! Everyone has my disguise. I need a new disguise. She watches her face at the sink and looks at herself in the mirror. Wait. They don't know my me. They think I'm another one of them being me. That's good, right? Sounds good to me. Was that you? A raccoon slips from under the bathroom stall. It was me. Another raccoon comes out from under the stall. Wow, you guys talk. That's like right up there. Another raccoon comes out of the stall, followed by Fluttershy. Me. Oh, you usually hang out in the bathroom with a bunch of raccoons? Not judging. 
<laughs> I came to the Hall of Records to lodge a formal complaint on behalf of these little guys. But when I got here, and crowd, so crowdy. <sighs> Makes a pony yearn for the endless frozen yawning black void of space. <sighs> okay. We were just hiding until we could decide our next move. Are, are you crying? No. I just splashed water on my face. Clear my head. What's the raccoon's complaint? I mean, they're raccoons. One of the raccoon's hands can boom me a towel. She dries her face. Thanks, Stripes. These raccoons have been accused of messing up the mail. Do raccoons sometimes steal a little bit? Yes, they do. Can they get into your triple lock turnip ball to eat all your turnips? Sure. Do they make garbage nests in your couch? Yes, they do. But they aren't male messer uppers, and they were with me the whole time the mail was messed up, and I'm here to clear their name. Oh, cool down, sister. You need to sit. Full of shine the hunts. Raccoons help her to sit and fan her. One hand hands her a turn. About the mail. About the mail. Look, long story short, it was me. I kind of have this evil nut job with an I want to own the whole galaxy complex after me, and he wanted this one. I know what you're thinking, as long as he doesn't start singing, right? That's not what I'm thinking. Well, I couldn't chance it. So I sent the one to one of my extra dimensional pony cells in Equestria. But Evil McNut Job got wind of it and got here before the mail did. But I got wind of his getting wind if you catch my drift. So I got to the mail before the mail got to me. Other me. And then he got to the other me before I got to her. Kibishi? It was you. Yes. But no. But yes. Okay. <laughs> I've had to hide the wand. Look, I'll help clear your friend's good name, but first I have the little problem of, of a grade A psycho in this very building and... <laughs> a warning device goes off on her belt. No. I don't believe it. Astorius must have the wand! The records room. I have the wand! <laughs> and now, I have the scroll! <laughs> Approaching the records room door, Kabumi. Fluttershy and the raccoons move stealthily. Don't worry, Kabumi. I have a friend in a high place. Wait here. We'll go find Princess Twilight. Stella turns to look at her, but Fluttershy and the raccoons are gone. She slips around the door to see Astarius with the wand and the scroll, floating at Pinky and Rainbow and Twilight. I have no further <laughs> use for you. He blasts them with the wand and they disappear at the door. Something tells me that friend in a high place ain't available anymore. Inside the giant meteor, it's pitch dark. Someone help me! Bing! Just like that, Twilight, Pinky, and Rainbow Dash are there. Ooh. Muffins turns on her headlamp, illuminating the three other ponies in the cramped space. Look, worth a shot, though. Where are we? Inside a giant meteor? Two words I never want to hear again. Giant meteor? Wait, what? We're inside the giant meteor? How do we get inside the giant meteor? Remember the big crazy who called me a librarian? Who actually sang that he likes breaking necks and then took your wand and demanded that I dig up the scroll on how to work it so he can enslave the pony in the pony dimensions? Asterius! Yeah, yeah. He just teleported us in here. Wow, that's the next level cosplay! <laughs> Way to join the fun, Twilight! Not now, Pinky. It's not cosplay. It's not fun. That crazy pony guy is for real. What? You just gave Asterius the scroll on how to work the wand to enslave the pony dimensions? We're doomed! Actually, I gave him an ancient petition from some ancient funny daddy complaining about raccoons in his yard. <laughs> Hi there, Muffins. Hi. Hi, Muffins. Hi. Hey, Muffins! Hi. Feeling the walls. There has to be a way out of this thing. Everyone grab some wall. Find the door. Everyone turns and faces the walls. Crane! Bang! Bomb! Get out! Get out! Ah, ouch! What was that? Soul scan, right hand, popcorn dance handles are really long, sorry! Oh, you brought some pots? Well, that's thoughtful, Pinky, in case we need to cook. <laughs> in the ancient 
Records Room. Kabumi turns into Raggy Muffins, turns into Raggy Muffins, and stealthily sneaks behind Astarius. I like a little village I can pulverize, pillage, nullify, and neutralize. Can't lock you with the prize. Lucky you. I don't see through you, Raggy Muffins. <laughs> I tire of this enough! Oops. Oops, my bad Astarius. Didn't mean to be so draining. Hate to soak up your sunny day. But look up, chump, it's raining! Kabumi. Meteors crash through the ceiling. One lands smoking in front of Astarius. He growls and waves his wand, flicking the meteors out the door as they fall in rapid succession. Screams come from the convention outside. Stop! There are innocent ponies out there! I know, and I'm sick about it. Or, I would be if I cared. He flings more meteors out the door. No! Interior. Inside the meteor. Not so much as a crack in the wall. Twilight, Rainbow, and Muffins feel around the walls. They freeze, hearing falling meteors and screaming outside. What the hay is going on out there? Pinky, not now. Quit tugging on my tail. I'm trying to hear. I didn't tug your tail. I can't move. Rainbow is standing on my back. I am not. Muffin searches for her goggle high beams. They pick out the reflection of three pairs of eyes above Pinky. She grabs Muffins by the high beams and rolls her head around so the light runs over the pots and mirrors, making a disco effect. Pinky, not now! <coughs> How did you little guys get in here? The raccoon shrug. They can't have gotten through that tiny hole up there, can they? There's a hole? Where? She flies up to peek out the hole. Oh, oh that does not look good. Interior, the ancient records room, continuous. Astaria stands with his boot on Kabumi's neck. Over! <laughs> Just like that, I feel empty, cheated, when? Once you've had your muffin, as they say, your muffin's good as gone! <laughs> More destruction, a dimension collapse now. What do I want? Is it world peace? Just throwing that out there. Hmm. A little me time. I want to exterminate the verminate and desecrate and liquidate and devastate and fantasistrate and mutilate and subjugate. Or to deferate. Stop. <laughs> Don't be absurd. Bore to deferate. Not a word. But this is devastate, assassinate. Get out. singing to him, but to Fluttershy, who has crept in, distracting. Hey, I don't mind if you kill me now. Ooh, a little audience just in time. Want to see me collapse a dimension? Little yellow and pink soon to be exterminated filly? <laughs> Let's just read this scroll, shall we? He unfurls the scroll. <laughs> Be it known hereby, and with precipitous immediacy, if no interior inside the mirror, meet your continuum. <laughs>
Shawshank was in here, she could ask the raccoon until they got in. I wish Rarity was here! Why? Is it great if someone was screaming nonstop? <laughs> Interior, the ancient records room, continuous. That, no, what's this word? It, it's faded. He shows the scroll to Fluttershy, who reads, Nuisance. Right, okay, thank you. <clears throat> Nuisance raccoon shall walk upon my lawns or enter my premises forthwith, without a qualified chaperone, possessed of a detritus removing receptacle and a leash of sturdy provenance. Astarius looks at the wand. Hmm, not what I was expecting. Was there a flash at any point feeling uh, enslaved? If we're talking feelings, I feel like a chiropractic visit is about to happen. Her might want to watch. You, you, you big meanie. Raccoons are my friends. They do not belong on leashes, and you take that back right now, Larissa! You what? Lay down the law? I can squish you like a Fluttershy gapes at Astarius, legs sticking out from under the meteor. Uh, I'll just read this one misdirection. Uh, Kabumi tumbles to the side as suddenly the meteor wobbles and rolls over Astarius. <laughs> is pizza. <laughs> yeah, sure, he's just resting. Princess and her friends. He blushed them into the medium. Oh, I sent the raccoons to find Twilight, cause raccoons can get into anything. They might be in there. She knocks on the meteor. <laughs> raccoons, can you let everyone out? A hatch in the meteor opens, extruding a ramp. Raccoons, muffins, rainbow, pinky, and twilight tumble out. The raccoons land like ninjas. The ponies land in a tangle. <coughs> we robbed the rock! <gasps> Did we do it? Did we get him? Did we knock over the crazy guy? The main six, muffins, and the giant meteor are in Twilight's library. Astarius is a big armored pizza wrapped in chains. Kabumi touches Twilight's scorch. Horn with the wand and restores it. All set! Genius move, by the way, giving Astarius that ancient raccoon controlling petition. We would have been enslaved by now. Twilight holds two scrolls. Guess we better destroy the real scroll. Even though it is an ancient artifact of great cultural significance, and I'd really like to study it and. Towards that sucker, Twilight. <laughs> They all give Twilight a hard stare. Okay. She blasts the two scrolls and reduces them to ash. This is me, folks. Gotta get this nasty statue to the Galactic Authority. Come on, bring it in! The ponies hug Kabumi. Muffins hangs back. Kabumi holds out her arms to her. Huh, I guess the rumors weren't true. Rumors? Kabumi, still hanging there with her arms out, folds them quickly. <coughs> ah! Well, bye then! Okay, bye! Kabumi jumps into the meter and blasts off through the roof as the iris out. The big, fat, hairy head! <laughs> Yeah, see that?
Lightbox. Hey, you know what? No. This wouldn't happen without Tabitha. Let's all give her. Thank you. Thank you.